Hi, if your machine's showing the F21 code, then it means it has an electric motor fault. Now that may seem pretty bad, but actually the F21 code is a pretty common fault. And I'm going to show you a fix now that's pretty easy to do and it works about 90% of the time, so it's worth giving it a try. Oh, by the way, it's worth mentioning that this F21 code fix will be appropriate for the following brands, which include Neff, Whirlpool, Maytag, Kenmore and Bosch washing machines. So the first thing we need to do is make this machine safe to work on. So I'm going to turn off the water and then disconnect it. And I'm also going to unplug it from the electrical supply. And at the same time, we're just going to disconnect the drain from this pipe here. And while we're at the back of the machine, I'm just going to take off this inspection hatch because having the access is going to be handy for later. So this machine just has a single T20 Torx screw at the bottom but some models might have more than one screw around the edges of this inspection hatch. Might be a good idea to catch that when you do it. And down there we just get our first glimpse of the electric motor. It just sits down at the bottom underneath the drum. Okay, so in a minute we're actually going to tip the machine on its side because that's the easiest way to access the electric motor. But before we do that, we want to make sure we get the water all out of it so we don't get a mess. So this little panel here, which has a tab on it, you push down on it, it's got a filter behind there. And you can just open that up and remove the hatch out of the way. Now most of these washing machines have a little drain tube with a stopper in the end of it. So you can just pull that out, get the stopper out and then drain it into a container. Make sure you put the stopper back in properly and put it back in place. But it's also a good idea, and you'll note I can't get the container under easily now, which is why I did the drain thing first. This is a little filter, and it's always worth um, opening that up and then having a cloth to hand to catch any water. And you can see there's still some coming out. And what I tend to do is let a bit drain out, tighten it back up, mop it up, and then loosen it up again to uh, drain out a bit more. And you'll find you only have to do this a couple of times and you'll get all the water. And while you're here, you might as well give this filter a clean if there's anything in it. So uh, this one's just got some stuff in it that prevents it from working properly. Mainly the pump though, rather than the electric motor. And we'll just give that a wipe. And then we'll pop our filter back in again. Make sure it's nice and tight so it doesn't leak later once you fix the machine. Okay, so now we're ready to lay the machine down. And I like to put a mat or a cloth on the floor to make sure the machine doesn't get damaged and scratched. And this is because we're going to access the underneath of the machine because that's the easiest way to get to the electric motor. Okay, so now you can see from underneath we have access to the electric motor. Now I mentioned a minute ago that the F21 code was caused by a fault with the electric motor. Well, the most common cause of a problem with the electric motor is actually the carbon brushes wearing out. So that's what we're going to look at now. And that's what I'm hoping is going to fix your machine for you. So the first thing we need to do is clip this little tie wrap here because that's what holds this uh, cover in place. And then you'll have to put a new tie wrap on later when you put it back together again. Okay, and you just move it off to one side like that. And then the next thing you need to do is disconnect the electrical cables. So the first one is this um, earth just here. Okay, just like that. And then the next one is this connector block. There you go. And then that just comes away like that. And now you can see it reveals the carbon brushes underneath. Now electric motors actually have two of these. So there's one here and there's one on the other side. And it is possible to change both of them with the motor in situ. Obviously the other one's harder to reach. So if you do this one first, you'll have a good idea how it goes in. Okay, so to remove the carbon brush, the first thing you need to do is pull this a little electrical connection off of it. So you can just see that there and I'm just pulling it away from the brush. There you go. And it just comes off like that. Just move that off to one side. And now this is just a really simple latch mechanism. So the first thing I'm going to do is push the brass piece you can see inwards that direction and lift this near tab up 
there you go and it will get into that sort of position and now you just do the opposite where you pull towards you and then you just lift up and you'll see the spring in the brush comes off comes up all as one piece there we go now that might look like there's still some left there but when it gets down to about 10 or 12 millimeters uh, then it stops making contact inside the motor and so the motor stops so that's actually quite badly worn and so we need new ones now i mentioned there was another brush around the other side of the motor and so what i'm actually going to do is take the motor out so i can show you that one being replaced and you might want to do it this way as well because reaching behind is quite fiddly and if you haven't done it before then maybe something could go wrong with the electrical connection or the direction you put the brushes in so i'll show you how to remove the motor and it's actually quite easy so can you see the belt there that's on the electric motor well you just have to um push it and turn it at the same time until it comes off of the end of the drive there we go so that's just popped off there and now there's actually two 10 millimeter bolts that hold this motor in place that's all so the first one's here at the top and then the other one's literally um, the other side of the motor in a similar position and you'll need a ring spanner to get to these so i've got a ratcheting one and that'll be the easiest but if you've got a normal ring spanner then you'll still be able to do it and they're just short enough that they come out and if you remember that access hatch that we opened at the back of the machine well this is why we did it if we do need to take the motor out then that's the other 10 millimeter bolt there that we need to get to okay so this motor will come out now that those two bolts are out and all you do is push this motor this way because it needs to come off of these pegs at the front uh, there's two of these one here and one underneath and what you might find is that a screwdriver helps you with this just to do a bit of gentle levering at first and again it just comes off the end okay so this is the motor here and this is the orientation it was in when we just removed it that's the brush we already removed so if we just tip it over now you can see the other one that we still need to do and it's a similar process again so we're just going to take that electrical connection off sometimes need a little bit of encouragement and now if you remember we push it up pop it or forward pull it towards you and then this brush will come out same as the other one but what i'll show you this time is these are often chamfered a little bit at the end can you see so it's really important that you remember which way it came out so it came out like that and it has that angle on it and when you put the new ones in you'll put them in exactly the same so i found some replacement carbon brushes on amazon and as you can see they're quite inexpensive this is a really common part number here for the Bosch washing machines and the other brands I mentioned but you're probably best checking with the seller before buying to make sure they fit your machine. I'll put a link to this in the description below. Well as you just saw the carbon brushes arrive they were on next day delivery so that's great and this should allow us to fix the Bosch washing machine F21 error code. So let's get the brushes installed. So I mentioned that it was important that these go in in the right direction because they have a chamfer on them and let's say you've got mixed up and you don't know exactly where they came from well when you look you can see this holder and when you look down the middle you can see it's going down at an angle and so that means that this brush will go in that way and so you can see uh, that this makes sense to make it have good contact so let's get it pushed in should slide nice and easily like that if it's not then you've got an issue and you need to um, check your brushes to make sure they're the right size okay and because the carbon brush is so long now uh, then the spring can be a little bit awkward to get down into that holder so you just need to persevere with it really there we go and now I just push that electrical connector on and that's one side done and so I'm just going to turn this motor over now And this is a very similar orientation to how it came out of the machine if you remember so you remember me saying that these needed to drop in and move up and down quite smoothly well for whatever reason this one isn't can you see how tight it's going 
this wouldn't work properly because as soon as the tip wore off then it wouldn't slide down the spring wouldn't be strong enough so if you ever get this situation this is how i deal with it can you see how it's left marks down this side of the brush and down the other well all you have to do is get a piece of sandpaper and just take a little skim off of that side of the brush i don't know why this sometimes happens but it does uh, but anyway what it means is this carbon brush is just a little bit too uh, large in that direction and so I've got some 80 grit sandpaper and I'm going to get it on a nice flat surface and then as evenly as possible so trying to make uh, this stay nice and level I'm just going to give it a couple like that and a couple on the other side and then I'm going to try it again because we don't want to make it baggy in there but we want it to fit and to slide in and out properly as you can see the carbon brush now slides in much more easily so i'm going to go ahead and feed it the rest of the way down just using this screwdriver to help poke it down there and obviously feed the spring in after it and then what you need to do if you remember from the last side is that top tab you need to insert it first and it will be at a little bit of an angle and then you slide it upwards and then you push the second tab down and then you have to slide it back the other way again and that locks it just like that and now we need to put the electrical connection back on i'm just going to support this tab at the back with the screwdriver just as i'm pushing on that electrical connector there we go so let's get this motor installed and so these two um mounting points here and here they go on to uh, the point here that you can see and the one that's a bit lower down and obviously the motor goes on with the pulley facing that direction so you just need to get the motor far enough forward that it will go on to both of those points and then at the same time you have to line it up at the pegs at the front and there's two of those as well there we go that's it and then i'm sure you remember that there's a couple of bolts that holds this in the first one's here and the other one we accessed from uh, the little service hatch that's at the back. Just get it nice and tight. And then the other one, as I mentioned, is down underneath the motor. And it's actually really hard to film. You saw me undo it earlier, so I'm sure you know where it is by now. And this time I'm just going to reach and do it from here. So the way to get the belt back in is you put it on the small pulley side first and then if you go around the other side now you can see the drum here so you hold it onto the small pulley with one hand and that's what i'm doing with my left hand which is just out of shot and then you just start to feed it onto the uh, the big steel wheel here that drives the drum and we just get it on at the top first it doesn't matter if it's on at the bottom in fact it shouldn't be and um and now you rotate this large drum and what i'm doing with my right hand down here is i'm just stopping the belt from coming off of the large wheel that's on the back of the drum and with my left hand i'm making sure it stays on the motor and i'm rotating this there you go i think you heard it pop on then didn't you and then this will centralize just because of how the pulleys line up to each other and while we're back here i'm just going to pop this inspection hatch back into place and this uh, back panel is kind of a strange design because can you see there's just a tiny notch here well what you do is you insert the front part of the panel until it's on the notch at the top and a corresponding one at the bottom and that part's inside the machine as you can see but now the rest of this panel is going to be outside the machine it uses that as a little pivot point and now you put the screw in this design probably saved them two screws and now just a bit of finishing off to do so uh, we just have the electrical plug to put back in it only goes in one way so you can't get it wrong just make sure you push it in firmly and all the way and then we have our earth connection which goes onto the tab okay and then we just have this little splash shield to put back in place it feeds down the back just a little bit and the wires go through this little split here and then the tie wrap goes through the holes that are in the splash shield so just threading that through and then it actually tightens up around that little tab there that's on the motor there you go that looks better 
So now we just need to wrestle the machine back into place, connect up the drain and the water, remembering to turn on the water valve, plugging it in and turning on the switch at the wall. So we're almost ready to test the machine by putting it on for a spin, which will allow us to test the motors working properly. But you'll notice that our washing machine F21 code is still flashing, and that's because we haven't reset it yet. So let's do the F21 fault reset. So that's in the right place at the moment. It needs to be six o'clock at the spin position. And now we need to press and hold the spin selection button for five seconds. And then while we're still holding it, turn this one notch. So this is like the seven o'clock position now. Hold that for a further five seconds. Release the button and then immediately turn the dial to the off position. And now this time when we turn the dial around to spin, you can see the F21 error code is gone. And in fact, it's telling you that it's going to give you a 12 minute spin. So it's the moment of truth now. Time to see if we fix the F21 error. And now all we have to do is press start. It's just doing a little bit of pumping out first. So what we like to see. Okay, so as you can see, it's working. So hopefully that'll help you fix your Bosch, Siemens, Maytag, Whirlpool or Kenmore washing machine. If the video helped you, then please let me know in the comments. And if it didn't help you, then please let me know in the comments because it might help me and it might help other people. And if you enjoyed this video and content, then please subscribe and maybe I'll see you in the next video. So you've watched the video, now fix it. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.